guys, today I'm going to show you a little bit of uh, some tooling work on how to create an edge connector. And you know, it's not just uh, old stuff, like this is an old uh, 80s game cartridge type connector, but this is actually a, a more modern, just a few years ago, uh, flash drive from a Mac, Apple MacBook, and it still also uses a card edge connector. And so what a card edge connector is, is whenever you have these extensions of the printed circuit board, physical extensions, and then you have connecting fingers along the, the edges of these boards, that's what's called a card edge connector. So we're going to use um, a piece of software called Eagle in this particular example. There's other packages out there, but this is the one I prefer. And we're going to walk through this. So this is just a fresh install of Eagle 9.3. And what we're going to do is um, we're going to come into our libraries and I'm going to use a custom library as opposed to the managed libraries that come built into Eagle. And if you don't already have an entry under this, you can simply come up and do File New and create yourself a library to start with. But in order to create one of these edge connectors, it's a, it's a multi-step process where I first have to define the female side of the connector that this, uh, you know, something like this would plug into. And so I do that by adding a symbol. And I'm just going to go our put a name, create that, and we come up here and we sit in our, our usual uh, view when we're creating a, a symbol. So give it a little description. And I'm going to come up here and I'm going to draw out a um, just something that's a placeholder for the female side of this connector. And once I get this drawn out here, then I'm just going to go and do the pins, right? So I can come over here to the pin command, and let's just say, for sake of argument, that this guy has I don't know five pins on each side. 10 tool. And uh, I'm going to rotate these and stick them on this side. And then let's go in and give some names here. Let's just say these are data lines. And then we'll go on the other side. This is all, you know, we're just making this stuff up just for illustration purposes. Let's say this guy is a 5 volt DC line. In fact, I'll come over here and we'll go ahead and set him instead of IO to power. And then let's just say we've got maybe some serial kind of interface here. We've got a few address lines. Let's just throw in a, a ground line. And we'll go over here and we'll change its type as well. All right, so now we've got a sample connector. So we'll go ahead and save this guy and uh, we'll go back in. And now we've got our sample connector. The next thing we got to do is define a footprint. And the footprint's going to be the actual male side, the actual board side. So this is where the, the real work comes in. So now the way we would do something like this is we'll take the, you know, first of all, let me change the grid here. I'm going to change the grid just to make it easier to see into millimeters. So default of one millimeter and we'll just say maybe 0.1 for the alternate. And then I'm going to take uh, a surface mount device pad and I'm going to come up here and let's say that this needs to be, um, well, let's say, well, I'll just do it like this. Let's just take one of these and put it here. And then let's go edit it. And now let's say that the specification needs to be one millimeter by eight. Okay, so maybe that's the length. Maybe, maybe we're saying that's the length of these fingers. Maybe that's the specification for them. So I'm going to say that they're one by eight. 
and uh, we know we need about uh, five of them. Oops. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do a copy. I'm going to make a few copies of these. I've got five of these. In fact, I've got it off center here, and what I like to do is keep everything centered along this um, main grid here. So I'm going to hold down my control button, right click. Oops, got to say lit and move. And then I'm going to kind of center this up here. And I'm on a MacBook here, right? So the commands might be a little bit different on Windows. So at this point, I've got my five fingers for one side, and I'm just going to go in here and label them. So let's say this is pin one, two, So now we've got our top layer done here. So now we want to do the bottom layer. So same thing. I'm going to come over here, and I'm just going to make a copy of this guy. I'm going to kind of send him over here to the side, and I'm going to switch to the bottom layer. And I'm going to take my copy, and I'm going to set him at bottom. He's going to turn blue. And actually, we're going to change it. Typically, the other side is uh, labeled in alphas, so I'm going to call this guy an A. And the same kind of thing. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to copy him. So I've got this guy. This guy and this guy and this guy and then I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna finish labeling so I'll call him B I'm gonna call him C and D and E all right and now that I got everybody labeled I'm gonna move them into position right on top of the top fingers so now if I switch to back, back to the top layer, I've got my reds. I switch to the bottom layer, I've got my blues. And then the other thing I like to do when I'm doing something like this is switch to the dimension layer and just kind of give a rough outline of what I think the actual connector needs to be. So if I come and draw uh, a line here, I want this to be zero, although sometimes it doesn't take. And let's see, I've got my uh, I've got my grid in millimeters. And let's just say I need this to be 10 millimeters. I don't know, let's see. I mean, we've got here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. That sounds good. Let's say this guy needs to be 16 millimeters wide. Here, kind of complete this. At that point, I've got a, a rough layout. I'll save this. I'll go back into my library, and now I've got a footprint, which we see here, and I've got a symbol, which we see here. So, the last thing would be let's add a device and put them together. And then when I come in here, what I'm going to do is a couple of things. I can go in here and say uh, what the description is. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to select a local package. And that's where I'll take the footprint we just did. And then I'm going to add a part and I'm going to select this particular symbol. And now I'm going to connect these guys up. And what I'm going to do is, on the left-hand side, I'm going to associate these left-hand side items with the top or red layer. So I'm going to connect 5 volts, address 0, 1, and 2, and ground. And I'll associate the right-hand side that you see there with the bottom layer. And it actually looks like I made a little typo and hit an extra 4 there. So I'll just ignore that. It doesn't matter. I'll leave it like that. Get this guy connected up back in. So now I've, I've, got, I've got what I, I need. Now, now I want to use it. So let's create a uh, sample project. And let's create a schematic inside of it. 
Now, in order to actually use this guy, I've got to go into the library manager, and I've got to come over here. I've got this selected, only show me local libraries. I just want to make sure I actually am using that custom library. And make sure that I see it in my list. And there it is, so great, it is set to use. So now when I say I want to add a part, and scroll down and find that custom library I created and I can add this guy. All right, so I don't need any other parts for this example. What you could do is you could bring over different things that you were uh, connecting up to this connector. I'm just going to go right to the schematic board layout though and now, this over a little bit, now we've got our board and I'm going to kind of position him in like this and I'm going to just uh, adjust the size of our board layout a little bit. It's always difficult to grab these guys when you've got these little tab things on the way there on the side there he goes. All right let's blow him up a little bit. So now what I need to do is I need to go to my dimension layer and draw a line, 90 degree right angles. I'd like it to be zero width. It doesn't always come out that way. That's all right. If it doesn't, I'll show you how to fix it. And I'm going to go measure out along the lines I used when I created the symbol. Whoops. Looks like my grid's off. Forgot to set this. Let's do that. Millimeters. I'm going to use one. 0.1 just to get started. Now let me try drawing that line. Try zero width. Still a little off for some reason. I'll fix it later. All right. And then I could come over here. Like I said, it seems like it's like a little bug in the new version of Eagle work. It won't take the the width that I want by default. It'll do it if I'm doing something on the top or bottom layer, but it won't seem to do it on the dimension layer. So presuming that these guys are lined up properly, I can go delete the superfluous piece and try to bring this guy in a little bit. Probably need to adjust the grid just a little bit smaller. Let's go ahead and change these dimensions and probably one of the most important things is adjusting the grid when you run into problems like this. When you're trying to get an exact match on this stuff that's usually what the problem is. All right so I'm going to come up with this guy here. All right so now I'm going to do the other side. Go back and I'm going to draw another uh, dimension line. Sometimes, um, yeah, sometimes you get this. It doesn't connect all the way. And when that happens, we just have to go in and manually adjust it. We'll make this guy zero. So we can see him. This guy zero. So we can see him. Probably should have did this on the original symbol. And then what I want to do is blow this up a little bit. Because what's happening here that's causing it to not take is this guy's off a little bit. You guys can see right there. And the easiest way to fix that is let's look at our main line 2507 to 4317. And the one we're trying to do, let's see, it's the one I want to change, but what was this again? This was 2507 to 4317. Probably what I'm looking for. Yep. Make that match, and that should now have our line connected, so we should be able to safely delete this now. Nope, we still got to get the bottom fixed. And 
go take a look at the bottom and see. Yep, bottom's off as well. So 2507, 4.7. This guy. This is the one we want to adjust. Oh, not that one. Seven to point four, twenty five point seven to point four. There it goes. Sorry, grabbed the wrong one. Now we can safely delete these because they're connected. That's the uh, key thing that was causing the problem there. All right, and we're going to do a little adjustment here because we can see. Now this is all very rough stuff, right? It's just to give you a rough idea on what you do. But now if I take a look at the board preview, I have got a uh, example of you know, both front side and, and uh, bottom side. I've got an example of a card edge connector on my board. So that's really the basics of all you do there. And you can kind of do whatever you need to do and put components in here and <clears throat> adjust the, uh, the spacing in, in terms of whether the manufacturing tolerance is here. So I notice it's catching that these fingers are, are too close to the edge. That's yeah, so because the original outline that we did and we just did a symbol's footprint is a little bit off. But anyway, that is how you would go about starting to create something custom like this. And of course, then the next step on this you would do is the measurements, right? So whenever you do a board like this, I'm gonna go to the um, measures dimension and we can come in here and we can start laying out you know, what is this, right? So we can come in here and we can say, I've got these various dimensions here, and these are obviously just random. But it allows you to then begin to build up what does it take to replicate something like this or something like this. You know, even this has even got a key on it, like a notch, and you can even cut that out of the board as well, just drawing on the dimension layer and eventually get it to exactly what you need to be. I mean, sometimes you'll also have uh, an example where one of these types of devices will have maybe a hole in there, and that hole might need to be a certain specific size, right? So, you know, right now the drill here is uh, 0.35. Maybe it needs to be uh, one, right? And so you can come in here and you can change that. Maybe there's some type of mount or something that is needed to hold that. And you can make those kind of adjustments as well. You put those guys in there, and then you end up with a couple of holes in the board. This is a great you know, tool to preview what you've got there. Anyway, I hope that helps you out. And by the way, by putting stuff on the measures layer, none of this stuff shows up in the board, right? Because it's not anything that's silk screened or printed. This is totally just for your reference when you're taking a look at it. Anyway, I hope this helps you out. Um, it's something that you know occasionally I run into, and I have to make little boards to replace things. It can be an automotive. A lot of times in retro computing, um, you make little boards to fix things and, and keep stuff going. So I hope this helps you out and how to do that. If you have questions about it, just uh, ask in the comment section. I'll try to help you. Otherwise, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.